I'm sorry. Sorry for using you. A few of you. Opening doors in your sexuality. I took advantage of you. And one of you knocked on death's door. Thankfully, you, you didn't go through with the suicide. But I never truly understood your despair till years later when I knocked on death door myself. Looking back, I still remember the pain so clearly. She called to tell me our three-year relationship was over. She said it's because I'm not a man. She was seeing a man behind my back. Ever since childhood, I needed to be the man to protect my friends, be the surrogate husband to my mother, to be a better man than my father was. I tried to be better, but was not man enough for her. The night of our breakup felt like the longest night of my life. I look around our house filled with memories of our love. She was the first lady I found fulfillment in out of all the ladies I was with. We met while I was in a seminary, Bible school. Finally, a Christian like me, we shared common values. We could even study the Bible together. Well, some chapters at least. Other parts of the Bible we avoided when we were together because we knew what we were doing was not the kind of love God intended. I held on because of the hope that we could at least do life together. Forever? Or so I thought. I left the house determined to die. I couldn't care about the many children and youth who look up to me, always wanting to talk with Pastor Trifina. Yes. I became a pastor after years in seminary. I managed to hide my lesbian ways from the world, but I couldn't hide from myself. I served a 24-hour notice and I left my job as a pastor. I was done meeting all the expectations. I left church with so much pain, pain from causing hurt to the people that I love and I respected. I felt unworthy. I was that. No more mummy's good girl. No more Christian club president. No more pastor. No more people pleaser. No more protector of the weak. I started to pray on the weak. I was going to exercise true freedom. I went online and hooked up with many people. I became a sex addict. My porn habits got so out of control. I even tried sex with men, just to try and feel normal. But when the sex got meaningless and tiring, I knew I needed help. After 10 years of wandering in self-indulgence, I turned back to God. I plucked up the strength to trust God again. Part of my healing process required me to humble myself to seek forgiveness from others and forgive myself. I struggled with the person in the mirror. I was always teased as Miss Piggy in school because of my size. At the back of my mind, I held on the thought that I was at least beautiful inside. But my brokenness caught up with me. I felt ugly outside and inside. I asked God if I could ever be made beautiful. If, if I could ever be unbroken. I came to understand that to be unbroken, I had to piece back the dark holes in my life. I had to process my painful past and forgive the neighborhood girl who laid on top of me and kiss me on the lips when I was just six. She was also six, but I guess there was 
was a lot going on in her own family. Her elder sister stood there and watched the act of my sexual awakening with me, frozen, helpless. That was the first time I felt shame. I had to forgive my father for allowing the access of pornography videos in the house. I got hooked before I even knew what addiction was. I had to forgive my mom who burdened me with family problems. I felt I was robbed of a childhood to her if I wanted love. I had to learn it. I also had to forgive the first woman who baited me only to mock me because hurt people hurt people. I wanted to hurt no more. It took around 20 years to now say, I am beautiful. I didn't do it by myself. God's hand was present every step of the way. I just cannot deny His power. Today, I'm a pastor at PLU, C, pursuing liberty under Christ. My team and I journey with Christians struggling with unwanted same-sex attraction. We shower them with love, acceptance, tears, and truth. We also journey with their families and church community. We show them that grace and acceptance doesn't mean compromise. You know what? Jesus sat and dined with sinners and the tax collectors during his time. He showed them the truth while showing them grace and acceptance as well. You know, they received hard truth, yet they were still following Jesus and wanted more from him. Why? Because Jesus showed love and Jesus walked his talk. And that is the kind of freedom to love that I want to exemplify today.